Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I'm going to walk through using Fluent Migrator for database deployment and migration. In a couple of videos, I discussed about using Dapper and I'm going to provide the link up there. Now, Dapper is a micro RM, but the thing is that Dapper doesn't come with a migration framework. Entity Framework Core, on the other hand, comes with a migration framework, which helps automated deployment as well as migrations of database. Now, when you are using a framework like Dapper, which is a micro RM, or let's say if you are using plain AD or .NET for connecting to database and executing your queries. In that case, if you want to do automated deployment or migration, Fluent Migrator is the answer. Now, Fluent Migrator can also be used with Entity Framework Core because it is a complete separate framework used just for database migration. So for today's video, I'm going to cover creating a new database table and setting up primary key, identity, and a relationship with an existing table. Then I'm going to run the application to create the database during the startup. And also I'm going to show if we have to migrate down, that means roll back our changes, how we are going to do that. So for that purpose, I'm going to use this database called time management. You can name it anything or it can be anything in your existing application. And this database has an existing table called employee. In a production scenario for the first time, a table might not be even there. You might have to start from scratch, but I'm showing this table so that I can show how to create some relationship as well. So this employee table right now has ID, first name, last name, address, home phone, and cell phone. Now the ID is a primary key. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the column address because I'm going to normalize this table and move the address into a new table itself. So to do that, I'm going to say So now if I refresh, the address column is removed from this table. Now I'm going to create a new .NET Core project and I'm going to go ahead and use ASP.NET Core and I'm going to name it as Fluent Migrator.demo. I'm going to keep plain API for the time being. Now once the project is created, you can see I have the default controller I'm going to keep it as is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the new get package for Fluent Migrator. So I'm going to search for Fluent Migrator.runner. And you can see that the Fluent Migrator.runner has dependency on Fluent Migrator.runner.core and Fluent Migrator as well as SQL Server. And SQL Server is the one that we are going to use for this demo. So I'm just going to go ahead and install this. Now, once the NuGet package is installed, I'm going to set it up in the startup.cs. Now to set up Fluent Migrator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the extension methods on the iService collection, which is provided by Fluent Migrator. And that is dot add Fluent Migrator core. That's the first one that I'm going to use. And then on top of that, I'm going to configure I'm going to configure the Fluent Migrator runner and then you can see that it gives uh, I migration runner builder action. So we are going to use that to configure the rest. So I can say config and then config dot we are going to add SQL server because that's the database that we are going to use. Then we are going to say with global connection string. That's the connection string we are going to use. And for the connection string, I'm just going to copy paste the connection string to connect to the time management database. I'm going to paste it here. Next thing we want to do is we want to provide the assembly where the Fluent Migrator should look for doing the migration. So we can say scan in and scan in takes the assemblies where it should look for finding out the migrations. So I can say assembly dot get executing assembly because right now I'm just going to use the current assembly dot for and here we have options. We have for what? For migrations, for version table data, or all. I'm just going to say for all. It means for everything. Right? So once I'm done with the configuration, now the Fluent Migrator is added to the dependency injection. Now here what we have to do is after everything is done, we can create a scope.
So we just created a dependency injection scope and I'm using the using keyword. So at the end of this statement, the scope will be disposed. And then I can say var migrator equal to scope dot service provider dot get service. And I'm going to get I migration runner. And then before I start with migration, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do migrator dot list migrations. Now list migration is going to list all the migrations. But if you look into it, list migration doesn't return anything. It's a void. It lists all migration to the logger. So what we have to do is we have to add also the logger. And for that, we can go here and to the fluent migrator, we can just do add logging and for the logging we have the action logging builder so we can use that and we can say dot fluent migrator console we can add fluent migrator console for the logging purpose so this will ensure it logs all the fluent migrator operation into the console so now that we are done i'm going to run this application and right now since i have not configured anything for migration the list migration is not going to return anything so let me change it quickly and run and if i run this so you can see that it is saying there is no migration found and it's an exception. But if we go here, the other thing you can see is that it went through the SQL Server processor and then, you know, configured the migrator, a migration runner. And then it created this table, the table called version info. Now version info is a table which is required for maintaining the version when it runs through all the migrations. Now I'm going to close it. And now if I go to the database and I refresh this database, I am able to see the version info getting created by the Fluent Migrator. Now there is nothing here because we have not done any migration yet. Let me get back to the project. So next thing I'm going to do now is define the actual migrations. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to name it as migrations. And inside that, I'm going to create a new class and I'm going to name it as migration underscore and I'm going to provide the date. So 06-07-2020 and let's set an hour. So that's my migration class. Now after I create the migration class, next thing I have to do is a couple of things is needed. One thing is I have to extend from the migration. And then once I extend, I have to implement the abstract class, which is up and down. And then the next thing I have to do is I have to use the migration attribute. And here I'm going to provide the version number. For the version number, I'm going to use the exact same number. It's a long as a version number. Now here you can see apart from version number, we can provide description and whether it's a breaking change or not. And then apart from that, there are transaction behavior and things like that. I don't want to get into all those complexities because those are not needed. And probably we don't have to use it in most of the production scenarios as well. Okay, now here down and up. So first let's implement the up method. For up method, what we are going to do is we're going to create a new table. So we are going to say, create which is a property at the base class dot table and for the table we're going to give name as address and then we can say with column and for the column name first one is id dot as in 32 dot not nullable because id should not be null and then we do we want it as an identity column so we can say it's an identity and then we can say it's the primary key. Next thing we want is we want the second column which is going to be street a string not nullable then with column city dot s string not nullable and then with column state dot s string dot not nullable 
And then finally, with column zip, a string, and this one is nullable. So this will create the table, which means here we have to delete the table. So we'll do delete dot table, and we'll provide the table name from here, which is address. So since we created a table in up, in down we are going to delete. Now with the table, it is not just going to be, you know, a table. We want to create, let's say we want to create a relationship with the employee table. We discussed here that we have this employee table and we want to create a relationship. So how we are going to do that? As we mentioned, we have this table employee here. An employee has an employee ID and we want to create a relationship with the employee ID and the address, right? because the address is for an employee ID. So for that, what we are going to do is, we're going to say dot with column. So first we have to create the employee ID column. So let's say with column employee ID dot as in 32. Employee ID is not nullable and dot foreign key. Here we are going to define the foreign key for the employee ID. And for the foreign key, you can see the foreign key has two parameters. At least we are going to use two parameters. There are other options also like foreign key name and also primary table schema. But for us, since everything is under the same schema, we're just going to give the table name, which is employee. And the primary column name in the employee table is ID. So we're going to say ID. So now this will create the foreign key association. And the next thing is we might want to create an index. So it's going to be a non cluster index and we want to create it on employee ID because that will be another column on which we'll be doing search. So it's important. For that, we are going to say again create index and we're going to give a name for the index. So let's say it's ix underscore address is the table name and employee ID. This you can provide any name and then dot on table. We're going to provide this table name address. Then we are going to say on which column. So the column is going to be the employee ID from here and then ascending or descending. So it is ascending dot with options non-clustered index. So this is what we created the index. Now next thing of course we want to do is we want to delete the index during down and the index delete will have to happen before the table is deleted of course. Delete dot index and then on table we're going to provide the same table name. Ideally, the table name should be a constant in the class so that you don't have to copy paste and don't have a typo. But for this demo, I'm just going with copying pasting. So now that we are done with this migration class and we derived it from migration, define it. Now if we run the application in the list migration, we should not see any error right now and it should print out the table that needs migration. So now you can see the application is running and then in the list migration, you can see here Fluent Migration Runner, it is showing that migration underscore 0607 2020 and 100000. This is the migration. It says it's not applied because we have not run the migration yet. So now let's run the migration. For running the migration, we can just do migrate up. And if we do migrate up, it is going to take the migrations and whatever is not implemented yet it will just apply all the migrations right now we just have one migration if you want to migrate to a specific version you can provide the version number here for now we have only one version so i'm just going to do migrate up and we're going to run this application now and if we run the application you can see here it is logging all the operation it has done so it has done a create table then it has done after creating the table it has done a alter table to create the constraint of foreign key. Then it has done a create of index. Now if we go to the database and if we just refresh the database, we can see the address table is created. 
In an address table, we can see the IDS primary key and employee ID is a foreign key. And if we get into the indexes, we can see that the primary key is obviously the clustered as well as the non-cluster index on the employee ID. So this is exactly what we wanted. And now if I re-execute this query, we can see the version number is applied and this is the version number. Now next thing we want to do is we want to migrate down. Now for migrate down, you can see that the version number is necessary. Now we don't have an initial version, so we are going to give zero because we are migrating down to zero. There is nothing else, right? But if we had a couple of migration file, we could have given which file we want to migrate down to. Now if we do that and if we run, now here you can see in the console log, it is now deleting the tables and indexes and so it started with dropping index, then it did a drop table, and then it also deleted the version from the version info. Now if we go back to the database, and if we refresh this database, go back to the table, we can see that the employee table is there, but the address table is gone. And if I re-execute this query, the version information also is gone. The other thing is that the version numbers for migrating up and down, all these things, ideally you should get it from app setting because then during deployment, it will pick up the exact version it wants to migrate to and it should be pretty straightforward. And this part of the code also can be put into a separate class and we can create it as a extension method on the app or we can create it an extension method which can run on the iHost builder itself. So there are a couple of options there. So this is all I wanted to cover today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to my channel and have been getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to it. And thanks so much for watching this video.